Hello. This video is an introduction to the subject of dating the books in the New Testament. Let me share my screen. Okay, dating the New Testament. This picture is obviously of Jesus on Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry. Now, I've recently completed a number of videos dealing with dating the Old Testament. And comparing dating the books in the Old Testament with the New Testament is completely different because the Old Testament books were written over an enormous period of time. Kingdoms rose and fell, a thousand year period, very large period of time. The New Testament, on the other hand, was all written in a period of really less than 100 years. So it was all during the time of the Roman Empire in the period that followed the life of Jesus, but not going too far past it. And we'll talk about that in some detail here. Jesus' earthly life shown there on the timeline, going from about 2 BC to about 33 AD. I'll have another video where I talk a little bit about why I think those are the dates, although uh, some people disagree on the exact dates there, but it is roughly in that time frame. And then the earliest New Testament manuscript fragments show up about 150 AD. So they're not very long after that. And uh, as a matter of fact, the first manuscript or the earliest one is this tiny manuscript called Papyrus P52. And it has uh, a few verses from the Gospel of John written on both sides of the of the parchment there, and uh, not parchment, papyrus, and it dates to about 150 AD. It's an interesting coincidence that's from the Gospel of John because that would really be one of the books that they would prefer to put a very late date on, and lo and behold, it just happens to be the very earliest uh, New Testament fragment. And there are many, many other papyruses that are follow on and not too many years after that, this other example, Papyrus P66, has much of the Gospel of John in it. Uh, it goes to about 200 AD. And like I said, there's uh, many others that follow after that. Finally, there's full books of the uh, New Testament pretty much all put together in a couple codexes that are in the 300s. So the books in the New Testament had to have been written between the time of the end of Jesus' life and of course when manuscript fragments start showing up. And there's actually though a great deal of disagreement about most of them. In this little section, I'm showing that some of the epistles there's agreement on and people agree whether they're conservatives or liberal or religious or not religious. In a few cases, they agree that some of the epistles were written from about 48 to 62, and they mostly fall into the category of uh, the letters of the Apostle Paul here. The, the ones which are read there, which I have highlighted, those are widely regarded to, by pretty much everybody to have been authentic, written by Paul. And so once you decide that it's written by Paul, you can be really close on the date when he wrote it, you know, within just a couple of years. So those letters are Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Philippians, 1st Thessalonians, not 2nd, and Philemon. The other letters which are attributed to Paul, the critics would, there are critics who would indicate that they think that they were not really written by Paul, but later. And all the other books, the, the Gospels and some of the other letters are also uh, books which are challenged as far as the date where people think that they are written. Now, if you're looking back at this timeline again, that indicates that the range of contention falls really between the end of Jesus' earthly life and the beginning of the New Testament manuscripts. And so really there's like about a hundred year period there where there can be some disagreements. Also, if you are making a timeline of important things that happened, you would want to include in 70 AD the destruction of Jerusalem. And I've got to hone in on this subject a little bit because it's a big deal when you're trying to date the New Testament, I believe. 
The destruction of Jerusalem was the end of the Judean Roman War that went from about 66 AD to 70 AD. The Jews at that time rebelled against Rome. They actually had an initial success, but the Romans uh, responded with uh, a crushing ferocity. It ended with a siege of Jerusalem and in the siege it was extremely violent, uh, deaths of uh, 1.1 million Jews, just simply an enormous, enormous number. Destruction of the temple, the altar, uh, the end of sacrificial Judaism after this time period. Before this time period, the Jewish religion was practiced with animal sacrifices and priests having that role, but at this time that all came to an end. There was no more active role for the priests no more Sadducees, no more Sanhedrin. So it was a major event. And I think it also included the depopulation of the city of Jerusalem too. The Romans built, this is the Ark of Titus, Arch of Titus in Rome to celebrate their victory at this time. This is a close up which shows of that arch, which shows Roman soldiers carrying out some of the temple treasures from the temple in Jerusalem. And they coined coins to celebrate it. This is on the left, that's the emperor Vespasian. And on the right, the coin says, on the back side of the coin, it says Judea Capta. And it shows a Roman soldier and a weeping uh, Jewish woman. So big deal. And I think that if you lived during that time period and shortly afterwards, the timeline in your mind might not look like that. It might look more like this. I mean, it was such a big, big deal to live on the other side of that event. And yet, to me, this is kind of a killer fact. There is no book in the New Testament that mentions the destruction of Jerusalem as something that has happened. Jesus foretells it. He, he mentions prophetically that this is going to happen, but it's kind of like lots of other, there's lots of other prophecies in the Bible that talk about things that are going to happen. And so Jesus foretells it. He foretold other things too. And nowhere in the New Testament is there an I told you so on that. I mean, nobody ever says that, like, just like Jesus said it would happen. It's just that Jesus foretells it and that's all there is. Instead, the New Testament repeatedly speaks about places and practices in a manner that indicates that the author doesn't have any knowledge of this event. Let me give you an example. This is a, uh, maybe the picking the, the toughest example of all would be the book of Revelation because in most cases where there's differences of opinion on the date of writing, more conservative or more believing scholars are likely to pick earlier dates and more critical or secular scholars are likely to pick later dates because that way, you know, the earlier dates imply that the apostles were writing and that they were eyewitnesses and that sort of thing. But the book of Revelation is an interesting case because that's one where most people, I think um, believers or secular scholars would tend to date that like in the 95 AD time frame when there was persecution from the Romans at that time. And yet I think that even the book of Revelation was probably written before 70 AD. Let me show you a few verses from that. Here, the author is told, he says, then I was given a measuring rod like a staff and I was told, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there. Now, this isn't in heaven. It's not a vision in heaven, by the way. This is, it's really talking about the the temple there in Jerusalem, and you can tell from the following verses. No hint that that thing has been destroyed. Of course, if he was writing in 95 AD, you kind of need to explain, I mean, is it talking about the temple is going to be rebuilt in the future? And that's what, that, you know, that will be one way to interpret the book of Revelation. And, but setting aside the way that you want to interpret it, it, the verse doesn't read as if the author thinks that the temple has been destroyed. Or, and this verse talks about two prophets who are godly men, but they're killed. It says their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city that symbolically is called Sodom in Egypt, where their Lord was crucified. 
So of course that's Jerusalem and it's talking about it as being a great and evil city, which you know that kind of would maybe, that's an understandable perspective to take in the 60s, but after the place has been completely destroyed, it would be a strange thing to write. And especially because it goes on to say that that hour there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city fell and 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake. 7,000 people are killed in the earthquake. At the time that John is writing, there weren't 7,000 people living in Jerusalem. In, I mean, in 95 AD, there weren't. So that's why I don't think even the book of Revelation was written after the destruction of Jerusalem. Or you can look at this kind of example. This is from the book of Hebrews, and it's talking about what priests do. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he's obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. Hebrews is talking about the Aaronic priesthood, Jewish priests doing this sacrifice at the temple. But if it was written after 70 AD, this would not be being done. So I think it was written before. And finally, in John, it says, now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five roofed colonnades. Now that place was destroyed also when the city was destroyed. You can, they've got archeological remains of it that, that are present today, but it was destroyed. So the gospel of John, I think was written before 70 AD. Another subject, uh, persecution. The New Testament is more concerned about Jewish persecution than Roman persecution. In other words, the early believers were persecuted by Jewish authorities and Jewish religious leaders, and that was a big deal. And Roman persecution, on the other hand, was almost not existent. Romans, as a matter of fact, were mostly positive in the New Testament. You had nice centurions like the one that Jesus said had great faith and the one who said, surely this was the son of God and the godly centurion that Peter went and witnessed to and then the one that made friends and helped Paul on the ship journey. The mayors and governing authorities were mostly responsive and seemed to help the Christians. Um, and this was an understandable perspective from 30 to 64 AD, just a second. If you're giving a video in real time, sometimes you have to let the dog out. So this was, this was an understandable perspective from 30 to 64 AD. Most of the opposition to the early church up until about the 60s came from the Jews, not the Romans. But it really all changed in 64 AD, and especially by the time you got to 70 AD. After that, this perspective is kind of overcome by events. In 64 AD, you had the Great Fire of Rome, a devastating fire that uh, destroyed much of the city. And the emperor, Nero, an evil man, he, he chose to blame it on the Christians and use that as a trigger to start persecuting the Christians. And from that time on, you have, oh, Christians to the lions and heavy Roman persecution of the Christian church would continue off and on for several hundred years. But in the New Testament, there's really not much at all about any kind of Roman persecution. I mean, there's hints that there might be persecution coming or some churches are undergoing some difficulty, but big, heavy Roman persecution. There's not much at all about that in the New Testament. This kind of persecution led to the death of Paul um, somewhere around 64 to 67 AD. Another thing the New Testament has no knowledge of is a thing that has happened. The death of Peter about the same time in Rome, once again, the New Testament, there's no book that indicates it knows anything like that has happened. And even the death of James, this would be James the Just, the brother, half-brother of Jesus, who is the head of the church in Jerusalem. 
And that would back you up all the way to about 62 AD. That's not mentioned either. And speaking of James, James apparently at the time that much of the books of the New Testament are written, he seems to be the church leader. He seems to be the top guy. Uh, in Galatians 2.9, Paul mentions him first before Cephas, Peter, or John. And in the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15, they face a really crucial decision about whether Gentile Christians have to follow the Jewish law or not. And James is the guy, the, I mean, the other people give testimony, but James is the guy that makes the decision. Everybody seems to understand that James is the most important Christian around. Now, later on, it wouldn't be too much later that people would begin to think that maybe the most important early Christian was Peter or Paul. Uh, you know, they have a more prominent role in the New Testament. But in the book of Acts, uh, it doesn't show that perspective. So anyway, my conclusion on it is that the entire New Testament was written prior to 70 AD. And I need to probably reference the book Redating the New Testament by John A.T. Robinson. Uh, it has even a very similar title to the one on this video. John Robinson was not a particularly uh, conservative scholar, but he was deeply convinced by the subject that, that I've discussed dealing with the destruction of Jerusalem and how that affected the uh, New Testament. And so subsequent videos that I make will look at this subject uh, book by book because of course every book is a little bit different and they all have a little bit of different take. There'll be some twists and turns along the way, but hopefully it will be interesting. So I will um, stop at that point and uh, Thank you for watching. I hope to be back soon with another video on dating the New Testament.